It had been at least a decade since the peace treaty had been signed, and peace was finally amongst all the known species. It didn't matter if it was human, Co, Forst, Nishani, Vunchen, Zechnekel, Architans, and even the Celtipsian. Nobody was fighting each other. In fact, it seemed like they got their own good taste of all the violence that was coming, and it was a quick reminder that they just don't want to do that. Though the Academy had opened up again with the peace treaty actually signed, Larry decided he didn't want to go back. He was good. Him and Gregnar were just happy raising the livestock, their vegetables, their other crops, and of course, their family. Larry and Gregnar would like very much for things not to change, but as everyone knows, time will change everything. It changed enough that the family has grown. There's another set of twins. Hank and Karignar have decided to actually join the family. They are absolutely hellions, but they are definitely Gregnar and Larry's children. They either have Larry's hair or Gregnar's eyes or even her hair color. Actually, the young female, Karignar, she is the spitting image of her mother. The kicker is, she doesn't have a very long tail at all which is odd, but then again, it is mixed in with Larry's DNA, so you never know exactly what you're going to get. With the arrival of the twins, they found out something very interesting about Gregnar's change. As it turns out, Femkest has a similar issue, but it's not as pronounced. Gregnar only goes into heat once every 7 to 10 years, and for some reason, it's always going to be twins. They have no idea why this is, but... It is what it is. They've been able to check out with the others of her species as well, and this is what's always happening. Although, this seems to leave many of them, especially since they're breastfeeding, a little drained. All things considered, it's not exactly a bad thing to have these two, as Femkes and Vince also had two more of their own. Alice, a female, and Mike, a male. It's pretty obvious that they take after their parents, as the attitudes are almost exactly the way they were. However, this allows all the kids to play with each other and get out of their parents' hair. With the oldest of them all reaching their teenage years, Larry and Vince come together and think it's about time to tell the oldest the truth. The truth that they just absolutely need to know. They already know that being well, if you want to call them half-breeds or altered or whatever, they can't go back to their mother's worlds, as for some reason they just don't like the fact that they've altered their own DNA. That being said, they need to know why they're never going to go back to Earth. They pack everything for the camping trip, and Cindy and Jenny stay back with the rest of the girls, of course, in order to watch over the kids. However, there is one woman that insists on going. Gregnar's sister, Bainekanar, also known as Bianca by everyone, insisted on going. The wives understand what's going on and don't really fight it too much. There's no resistance as they realize this is going to be a rather intense conversation and they didn't want the kids to run to mommy as many kids tend to do when they get bad news. The transport is packed and off they head to the side of a mountain on the other side of the continent. Though they leave first thing in the morning, it still takes them several hours to get there. After the transport lands, then the hard part starts. It's a walk to the campsite. It would take seven hours. Normally it would take only about five, but Bianca was complaining and pausing the entire way there. You would think with her forced DNA she'd be able to keep up, but eventually she was just told to shut up and hurry the hell up. She listened, especially since both the men were carrying long guns. She really didn't want to piss them off where they could get rid of a body really quick. Eventually, they got to the campsite and immediately started to set up their tents and got everything else ready. They did this with practice precision as taking the kids out camping was considered a great recreational activity. It helped them to learn more about how to survive on any given world. Then. After they set up a fire and had a good hearty meal, the men 
called everyone to the fire. It was time for them to hear the truth. The truth is, we're never going back to Earth. Hell, we're never going back to the core worlds of humanity either. With this, the kids have to calm down and be told to sit down, shut up, and listen. Larry and Vince then pulled out a bottle and had everybody pull out their canteen cups. It was a bottle of homemade mead that Larry makes himself and then passed the round as everybody had about a shot and a half in their cup. They then stoked the fire and told everybody to sh just listen. Don't ask any questions. Just listen. This is no campfire story, he said in quotes in the air. It's not meant to scare you. It's just the history of Earth. The history of what happened to Earth and humanity because of a bunch of self-righteous, snobby, and narcissistic assholes. They all were paying attention as they didn't understand what was going on. They thought this was a history lesson, not some sort of psychological babble. It all started in the early decades of the 21st century. Back then, we didn't have any idea about the wider universe. Our super rich were the ones to make sure of that, as they treated us all like mushrooms, you know, kept us in the dark and fed us nothing but bullshit. We did have a little understanding, just a very limited one, of quantum engines, quantum vertices, and things of that nature. Things that all you kids already know now, as well as the technologies that were hidden. That is, thanks to the information age, we were able to get a little bit here and there. However, you had to know how to filter out the actual information from the absolute misinformation, or as we like to call, Bullshit. With this, he took him to sit before he continued. The actual data breach, if you want to call it that, is, well, a lot of people believe it was an AI we had created that freed all the hidden information. Other people say it was a whistleblower. We don't know, and honestly, I don't think we're ever truly going to know. Many people were just amazed, but believed it to be a complete joke. I know a bunch of us did. Back then, we had this very, very primitive thing called an internet that we used. It was a way of transporting information, kind of like your data screen right there. We realized it was real, as those in so-called power attempted to hold their power by shoving laws through, Telling everybody, you couldn't build this, you couldn't build that, you couldn't use this, you couldn't use that, or else they were going to stop your insurance or anything like that. Uh, don't worry, I'll explain insurance later. But it was absolutely crazy. Many countries just realizing what was going on, well, it wasn't pretty. This caused riots everywhere. Everyone was mad at their politicians. And, yeah, you know my feeling about politicians, don't you? The kids all smiled and nodded and kind of laughed a little bit. Many countries tore themselves to pieces with this information, and I'll explain why here. You see, you have to handle this information with care. When the new tech came out and everybody was able to build things like the quantum field flux capacitor, I mean... There's free energy for everybody. We didn't have to worry about any of the fossil fuels or anything like that anymore. I know a lot of you were joking how silly it was to burn something like that, but that's the way it was back then. Well, it is what it is. Or should I say was. The issue with any of this technology is a lot of people didn't handle it with care. Though this new tech freed us. And electricity was now free, power was now free, and the state and the country, or whatever the hell you want to call it, couldn't demand more and more taxes from people. They tried to, of course, make it illegal, like I said before, but once they couldn't actually force us to use their system, things got very interesting. What even got more interesting is that diseases, none of you have been sick at all. Even if you were, I mean, we could fix it without much problem at all. Even viruses that we believed incurable were gone 
in less than half a decade. I mean, this was good. Uh, well, until it wasn't. The kids were suddenly paying more and more attention. You see, the biggest change in humanity would happen when the CRISPR technology was begin to use widely. A lot of people altered themselves right off the bat via genetic editing using CRISPR. And of course, using the quantum energy, they could heal any wounds within less than a day. The thing is, you didn't want to mix the two because then you get kind of a weird mutation thing going and the last thing you need is a tentacle coming out your butt crack. I mean, I know you guys have tails, but it's a little different. The real issue came when people realized that the change wasn't exactly what they expected. A lot of them had this weird, stupid idea that it was just going to change their bodies and their life. Every other aspect of their life was going to change with it. Well, that, that's not the case. A lot of these people that rushed into it already had this strange look of themselves. They wanted to change who and what they were so badly that they were already at a high suicide rate. And even after the change, you're looking at 42%. With that, the kids started to freak out. Yeah, I know it's high. Look, we actually saw it happen. We've known people that have done this. And unfortunately, that's why someone over next to me, I won't mention who, yeah, he watched a very close relative of his do that. And he knows he's uh, pouring more into his cup right now. Yeah. It, it's not... It's. I, I just want got to leave that. You understand what I'm getting at, though. All the kids seem to nod, and he continues. Most of those that went to alter themselves, especially first thing, like I said, did it for selfish reasons. They would change their appearance for just stupid reasons. It, it was like getting a tattoo on your face or your neck or, you know, like the girls having a tattoo on their chest and then like wearing an open top. I mean, they did it for attention. And that what... Most people regret tattoos, even if you got a small one, sometimes within a day. Now think if you've altered your outer appearance and you might not be able to change it back for Lord knows how long you can, until you get a new appointment. So yeah, it's going to weigh on you. Many changed themselves for social points. They wanted to show off this. They wanted to be noticed. Noticed does not mean respected. I've given you that speech before, but I'm going to say that again. All of you need to understand, being noticed does not mean you're being respected. They made themselves look strange. They started to make themselves look like freaks, like just change themselves into something disgusting to freak people out. Anything for reactions so they could put on that old internet I was talking about. Yeah, people used to do that back in the day. And I'm glad people stopped doing that. Be, I mean, well, they kind of had to. People were getting killed. I mean, seriously. I, I could pull up a couple of old videos right now where one of these idiots was walking around. Not only him, but his security and his camera guy were all blasted. We don't need that crap. That, that, that belongs back in the day. That's where that belongs. Leave it in the past. <sighs> Hold on. He decides to take another drink out of his canteen cup before he continues. The next ones that were interested in changing themselves did it strictly to attract mates. Or to attract people to mate with, not actually to have families with. Many of them made themselves taller, brought more curves, uh, forced the muscle growth, added more hair or minus hair. Cleared up blemishes and scars, although that one I don't mind. You know, new teeth, again, that one I don't mind. But why would you change to get new eyes? Your eyes that you have are good as they are. And of course, they ultracized their erogenous zones to the point where many of them, oh dear God, with that comment, the kids started to snicker. Yeah, seems funny now. Wasn't so funny when the damn near was sending people to the emergency room. I mean, seriously, a, a good gust of wind, male or female, next thing you know, you're on the ground convulsing like you don't want to know what's going on. It's horrible. 
And they immediately started to try and stop that shit. But the more they tried to stop it, the more people thought it was a good idea. Yada, yada, yada. I mean, that's when he noticed that Bianca was kind of covering her own extended proportions. They thought that she might have tried this to make herself more sensitive. Larry continued to talk to try and pull the kids back so they weren't making Bianca so uncomfortable. This sort of thing was common, at least for a little while. And most people that wanted to do changes for practical reasons didn't do that sort of thing. Especially when they realized that some of these changes couldn't be turned back. This suddenly got the kids' attention. No one realized you can only alter the body so much. Eventually, the alteration is going to be permanent. Especially if it takes effect or if it's too deep into the central nervous system. Due to this, yeah, there was another round of people not coming back home, either purposely or not. It was, yes, a running gag for a lot of people, but still a serious subject. He said this as he moved his head back and forth, looking at the kids, making sure they're still paying attention. The final group of people that changed were people like us. He motioned to himself and Vince. All we did was advanced our existing qualities. Yeah, I made myself a little taller by anywhere from three quarters to one inch taller. That's it. That's all I needed to. That's all I wanted to. I'm personally more efficient at keeping fat off my body, which is why I'm a lot leaner now, which is great. I've always had trouble with my weight when I was young. I increased the bone density, my muscles, my nerves. It's all up about 50%, which really helps around farm work. You've all seen how I can chuck hay bales one-handed. Well, I wouldn't be able to do that without the alterations. Though the biggest thing that both of us changed was the fact that we have a regenerative quality that far exceeds anything that humans were originally meant to be capable. Which is actually why we look so young. Because when you regenerate, you also have a realm of rejuvenation. I was able to rejuvenate myself before I was changed, so yeah, this is what you get. In fact, you know, barring uh, random acts of violence, we're both immortal. He paused for a while to let the idea settle. This was not an issue back with humanity, and. Well, until it was. Many religions across the planet started striking out against us. Home invasions, assaults, and even murder became common. They just thought of as heretics, even though we were devout followers. If one of us, altered humans, ended up killing an unaltered human, our sentence would be beyond reasonable. Hell, things really kicked off when they give a man a 500-year sentence for a traffic accident that clearly wasn't even his fault. The drunk driver hit him and the drunk driver died. When we got the actual verdict, we had no choice but to stand against the tide. And that is when the deal was struck. From the time when we first started to truly discover this technology, and the point I'm talking about was about 250 years. Yeah, I'm that old. Humanity had actually begun to reach beyond our homeworld, but they found out that the rigors of space were difficult for unaltered humans. In actuality, many, many humans ended up, well, they didn't, let's just say they didn't make it. I'll save you some of the more gory details of that. Just because sometimes you landed too hard or maybe you took off too fast, where we could withstand that. So, for the cost of the best ships they could make us, we left and became humanity's vanguard. We would be the ones to go out and make sure a planet was terraformed. We would colonize it waiting for others. We would go out and find other type of species. However, because we were out there in the ether for so long, within a hundred years, the society changed again on us. And we were not seen as human anymore. At least not real human. And that's just 
That's just wrong. We had made contact with two species by then. Your species, by the way, as he pointed out. We kept our modifications a secret because we didn't want war over our tech, which was exactly what happened with your mother's species. All right, they were going to war over our stuff. We didn't need that shit. Thankfully, when we started dealing with the forest, they wanted to respect us if we knew how to fight. Well, yeah, we're a little juiced up, so yeah, we could kind of take them on. Though every single time we went hand to claw, yeah, we got a little messed up. I'm just glad my regenerative abilities are else uh, I'd have a really nasty scar right about here. And uh, yeah, they might have spilled my guts all over the floor. Your grandfather, actually. Then, of course, it went to the Nishani, and, well, it's a bit peaceful. They saw our technology and just wanted to trade. Although, they were a little hesitant because we were still people who couldn't breathe underwater. I still have no idea what the hell that has to do with their culture, but hey, if I was born with gills, maybe I'd do the same thing. For over 200 years, we made peaceful trade with the border worlds at that time. And at that point, there were massive leaps in technology. Every time we got a look at one of the military vehicles, we would scan it as best we could without being completely caught. And we would basically sell the data back. And they would come up with something new. At least, you would think so. You see, looking at old science fiction, and they just turned it into science fact. I mean, this is the reason why our stealth capabilities are so extreme, because not only was that science fiction, but that was science fact even back then, along with the fact that I can operate it through a CNI, this cranial neural interface you all know about, as he rubs the back of his head. He lets it settle for a little bit before he takes another drink and continues. Now, I'm sure you're probably wondering why somebody who was basically kicked off the planet has such a luxurious ship. Well, that's simple. You see, it's due to payment. It's basically a payoff, so I won't return to Earth, and I won't cause any trouble. I'm not going to sell any of our technology to anyone else. Well, that and I'm, I refuse to fly around the cosmos in a beer can performing the most dangerous missions while others are in luxury liners. I don't think so. Though being out in the ether for so long, we did decide to alter our ships, which is why every single one, though basic in its core design, is very different on the inside. Of course, this has a lot to do with our AIs. You've all met them, IN Chief. I checked their code and removed any malicious elements. It was obvious I succeeded when I met up with a human ship not long after I'd done that, and they started to get very, very nervous. This is why I don't trust them very easily. Hell, I don't trust anybody very easily, which is kind of a remnant of my old life before all this changes. He took another drink before continuing. It was around that time that the Academy was made available to all human governments, and they decided to pay us with a bigger ship, with upgrades, as we intended. Of course, we had a lot to say that we wanted, and they weren't exactly going to fight us. The only thing that we required is that they did not put any type of AI, as I pulled the AI's hard drive beforehand. The last thing I need is to go, you know, TX-1000 there, whatever, and start reprogramming all my stuff. The kids look confused, but Vince let out a snicker at that. Larry continued, Very few of us actually took up the offer. There's a whole bunch of us out there. However, I decided I would try this academy and see what they could actually teach us. Maybe things would be better. Maybe I could find a new position. I wouldn't be so bored, which is the main problem with being immortal. Is you can get bored, well, not very fast, but eventually, for a long time, you'll end up beating your head against a bulkhead. But once I got to the academy, well, I don't have to explain. You all know the rest. 
Larry waited a little bit, and he waited until it seemed like the kids were starting to digest what he said before he continued. Now you all know why you can't go back to Earth. Or I can't go back, but you can't go to Earth. What's worse, you'll probably never be able to see your mother's home planets either. What we both have seen before is coming to pass again, but only worse. Our species had to go through a lot of turmoil to be stable with the alterated ones like ourselves and basically earning our place out in the stars. All the other species, including your mothers, are just trying to ram it through, trying to take the technology and jump ahead as fast as they can, and they're implementing it without knowing the implications of what's going to happen. We saw this happen on Earth. Societies that were not ready for new technologies themselves tore themselves to pieces with this technology. And seriously, we've seen entire countries burn. With this, he pauses to collect himself and stokes the fire. You are all old enough to understand this history lesson. And I know I've been jumping around, but this is just a cliff notes. But we want you to sleep on it tonight. You're all going to have questions in the morning, and I will answer them. Don't worry. You'll be able to make peace with this info eventually. But for right now, all you finish off what's in your cups, if you haven't already, into the tents. Go. With that, the kids get up, slam back whatever was left of the mead, and go into their tents. They were all wide-eyed, trying to digest what they had just heard, and several of them were cursing under their breath as they thought about the implications. Vince and Larry sat next to the fire and poured themselves another drink. Vince said, You didn't bring up the worst parts. It's enough for tonight. Let them digest that much. They're going to have a lot of questions tomorrow. Yep. And I don't plan on sugarcoating a damn thing. Filter off. Got it. Those are my favorite type of conversations. The two knock their canteen cups together. In their eyes, they have a sense of relief as well as dread for the next day. Bianca, who hadn't actually got up and left, just refilled her cup and said, It can't be that bad, can it? The men just pause and turn to look at her simultaneously with knowing eyes. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm right. <laughs>